On the show this week, we have India's fastest Android smartphone, at least until the airing of this episode. You never know what happens next. And we have the newest kid on the block, the Amazon Kindle. But is this a true bang for your buck? Of course, this is all the tropical tech that we're doing out here. But we're also taking you to the winter ski slopes in Switzerland, in Davos, where the Business Today team will be bringing you the latest and greatest in tech and business. It's going to be an action-packed episode. I'm your host, Ayush Alavadi, and this is Tech Today. A big surprise for you on Tech Today. You've seen a lot of EVs, gadgets, what we do in the metaverse with 5G, consumer, enterprises. We've done a bunch of things on Tech Today. But in my hand, I have something from BMW. Sir, sir, sir. EV is Okay, much to the disappointment of the crew. No, it's not an outdoor EV shoot today, though we've gotten you the best, the latest and greatest in the EV space and especially from the Auto Expo. But this is just what a keychain to a BMW looks like. Nothing like a BMW and those who own one, well, they know all about it. What we can do on the show at this point is the iQ11 5G. This is a partnership with BMW and no, no i4s like you've seen on the show before or iXs which are great cars. Though I can tell you that there's a little bit to do with e-ink, not the iX color changing concept but e-ink on this show. I promise you that but the iQ11, this legend edition needs to be unboxed and we're going to tell you why they're calling this India's fastest smartphone but from the Android world. And then we'll also tell you a little bit about whether this is a true gaming companion. Just going by launch season and the sequence of launches in the smartphone world, this is India's first Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 smartphone. What does that mean? The new platform by Snapdragon, which is why we were with the insiders in Hawaii a few weeks ago, was the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. It can do all sorts of cool things, AI, ML, and most importantly, ray tracing on Android smartphones. Comes to this particular device. And I must say, with this vegan leather, whatever sort of finish, it feels amazing to hold. The full review you will get on the Tech Today website. But all I want to answer, the only question I want to answer is, is this truly India's fastest Android smartphone? More importantly, what's it like for gaming? There are several ways to judge whether this is the smartest smartphone in the market. One way is to use Geekbench. The other is to really put it through its paces on the show. So very quickly, if we were to do the theoretical way and quite snappy to use very honestly but if we were to run a Geekbench score on it there you go a Geekbench score which looks theoretical right now but let me give you some perspective if you put this score in context that's 1448 on a single core score and a multi-core score of 4424 we're gonna try tossing everything in the way of this device and when we're talking about the OS, it's quite snappy, it's easy to use, it comes with a 144Hz display and that automatically means it's meant for gamers. And the gaming community is usually very excited about releases from this brand. Now of course it's got the three-stripe BMW design at the back, very quickly the camera module looks very Vivo-esque and this vegan leather sort of a white back is amazing to hold. Now things that really work for it of course are the fact that it comes with vapor chamber cooling technology, three chambers and a much larger cooling area as well. The gaming performance is amazing. Genshin Impact, Call of Duty and even if you play real racing, a game I like playing in between sets, the sensors are so accurate. So it's not just the software, there's a bunch of software hacks but the hardware is sublime. Also, we know all about ray tracing with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. We haven't been able to really experience that, so to speak, in our short time of testing, but that's something this phone will technically be capable of. Also, the fact that this chipset can do frame interpolation, it makes a 60 FPS gaming experience look a lot smoother, buttery smooth, like a 120 FPS experience. So yes, I can understand why gamers are so enthused and excited. 
That said, while it is a gaming monster, look, you can't get everything in under 60,000 rupees. When you do use this, and I'm trying to take photos with different lenses because it's got three at the back, and it's very inconsistent with the sort of photos we're taking. I don't think this is a phone for photography. This is a phone, a high-performing handset, truly for gaming. Okay, I know why you're looking confused. That might be because the Tech Today set is looking a little different, especially with these books. Full confession, we do read, but since we're tech geeks, we like to read on our tablets. And that's a way a lot of us like to read nowadays, on e-readers or maybe an Android tablet or an iPad. But these particular tablets come with several distractions. And then you can't replicate the experience that comes from reading a paper book. That's when we want to bring you over to the dark side using technology with the most reliable, consistent experience, which used to be a lot of people using older Kindles, right? This you must have seen with a lot of people. And honestly, it's good. It's got battery. It's got a fair amount of storage. You can access eBooks, all sorts of titles. It's not much of a strain on the eye and it is not much of a strain on the pocket, especially if you go for an entry level Kindle. Well, Amazon has launched the new Kindle 2022 11 Gen. This is the entry level Kindle. I know it's called Kindle 2022, but it's come to Indian shores in January. And so we're showing you the Kindle first hand, first look and telling you whether this makes sense and whether you can actually replicate a real world reading experience on this entry level device. This is very tough to replicate the experience that comes with this and it's a very special one. But what I can tell you is especially if you're traveling a lot like me and ever since the world has opened up, we do tend to travel so much more, then you need a travel companion which could be one super device. But the problem with reading ebooks on your iPhone or on your tablet computer is that there are so many distractions. There'll be notifications from Instagram, there might be some photo you want to see, maybe a game you want to play. That's why perhaps when Amazon launched the Kindle Fire or the LED version of their tablets, which was a color display, that didn't necessarily do well because what makes Kindles work is the fact that they are elementary, rudimentary and they serve a purpose and they serve it really well. They're compact, they're economical and they have fantastic battery life. One grouse with the entry level Kindle earlier used to be the fact that it didn't come with USB-C. Well, welcome to 2023, Kindle 2022. It comes with USB-C charging. It's also quite light at 158 grams. But now in 2023 with the Kindle 2022, Things have become a little more complicated because it comes with a lot more PPI. So the pixel density is better. Hence, the reading experience can be a lot better. Now, in terms of user interface, Amazon has really fixed things when it comes to their UI. Yes, it's very elementary with left clicks and right clicks to move pages. But that's what you want when you're talking about an e-reader, which just means reading books. So you can obviously access your library like this. You also have the Kindle store. Very good recommendations coming as soon as you connect it to Wi-Fi. Much better battery life. So in terms of the user interface, Amazon has that sorted. And I think it being elementary is what makes this a very popular e-reader. It also comes with an adjustable front light, like I was saying, with four LEDs. Dark mode is quite useful and also means lesser strain on the eyes in darker settings. Now an extended battery life with USB-C charging. The fact that you can last maybe five to six weeks on a single charge. It also comes with 16 GB storage, double the storage capacity of the previous version and Bluetooth for audiobooks and text to speech function. It also has very accessible themes here. You can change the layout, you can change the font. You can also do all sorts of things like show a clock while reading, book mentions about the book. You can also sync it up with Goodreads and get the sort of IMDB like rating for the book that you are using. This for under 10,000 rupees on a sale you might just get for eight or 9,000 rupees is a very good investment. And it has been with each and every generation. Strangely, the biggest competition for the Kindle comes from the Amazon Kindle stables and it happens to be the Kindle Paperwhite, a very popular device. But if I'm shopping for it right now, it costs nearly 12,500 rupees on Amazon. I'm getting delivery 
in less than 24 hours on Prime. The only thing I'm missing out on on this Kindle happens to be one feature, which is waterproofing. This is not waterproof. This is not waterproof, so you can't take it anywhere near a bathtub or out in the rain or any sort of moisture. This guy won't deal with that very well. More importantly, that is 6.8 inches when you're talking about the screen. This is around 6 inches at 158 grams. I think this is much better in that department. Holding it is so much easier, putting it in your pocket is so much easier and traveling with it is a breeze. So the price difference is around two to three thousand rupees between this, the entry level Kindle and the paper white. Then I think this is a better bet. But if it's a great Amazon sale and you're getting a good deal on the paper white, maybe getting it for thousand rupees more or fifteen hundred rupees more, then maybe the paper white makes sense. Otherwise, the new Kindle 11 Gen 2022 is a safe bet. Now, putting a technology show together is a lot of fun, but it also means we have to keep jet setting to the biggest tech events and launches around the world, which we will be doing a lot more in the next few weeks to bring you the latest and greatest in tech. A few days ago, we were exclusively at the LG India manufacturing facility to understand what the brand's Make in India push is all about. And more importantly, how are they building on an ecosystem of devices which are getting increasingly popular here in India. Have a look. Mr. G, what I do want you to do, since we are at this iconic facility, if you could just tell us what's happening around us, because there's so much movement, you can just give us a rough idea. How do these 55 acres uh, of this facility, how does it operate? And how do you manage to make it efficient mm. um, and truly mm. scale up the volumes and increase mm. business via this facility? Yeah, this is only one factory. As I told you, we have a two factory. Mm -hmm. This is not the, you know, surprising is on. This is only one factory. Yeah. In this factory, we are producing a, a refrigerator about 2 million set per year. Only this factory. And then uh, RAC, about 1 million set. And then washing machine front load also, we are producing here almost uh, 6 lakh. Mm -hmm. quantity and also TV also. So this is one of the, you know, uh, the general production site of LG India here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. now most of them is, uh, we are digesting in local domestic markets. So that's why we call, we say, you know, India has a most, most, uh, you know, potential country okay. of global. These are all good things to hear, Mr. G. But lastly, just one thing I want to understand is, when you consider LG's India business mm. and you compare it to markets around the world, mm. uh, how does it rank compared to far more developed markets? Uh, no, no, no. Maybe it will be very surprising if you uh, uh, heard what I'm saying is, India is world ranking number two. India business size of LG India, right after uh, uh, USA market. Okay. Globally, USA num ranking number one, India ranking number two. Others, number three, we have very big gap uh, with wow. number three. That's why we LG also have a very proud of, you know, business with India here. <laughs> and we hope that you do visit the Pune facility more and come and visit us in the Tech Today studio in Mumbai. Yeah. And maybe we'll show you around and, and you can tell us a little bit more about your gadgets. Why not? Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining okay. us on Thank Tech Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now we want to talk about the top tech events and the global events around the world which will be happening in the coming few days, weeks and months. But most importantly, let's address the elephant in the room that happens to be the biggest, hottest event of the year taking place right now in the ski resort town of Davos, home to the World Economic Forum for so many years. And we at Business Today are present in Davos having some of the top conversations. Of course, there's so much happening in terms of sustainability and there are trends from the world of business, policy and most importantly, technology. So here's a quick roundup of some of our top conversations and exclusive coverage from Davos. There's some talk about a new electric vehicle uh, for a two-wheelers, uh, four-wheelers. Uh, some other companies have got into it. This is the new Sunrise sector. Uh, tell us about your plans there. Well, uh, you know, personally, I'm very passionate about, uh, about cars, and that's been my childhood uh, passion. And I've been really wanting to build a, uh, a car project for a long time. 
Uh, we started working a uh, few years ago in building the project, but somehow uh, we dropped it. But I think now um, is the time when uh, uh, somebody wants to, uh, somebody needs to build a very high quality car in India. Uh, could be uh, something like a Tesla from India, and that's what I'm really working on. I use, uh, for my personal use, I drive electric car. I, my whole family drives electric car. In, in our company, we have a rule that uh, no more uh, IC engine car can be bought uh, where the company supports uh, the, the employees. So we, we only buy electric car uh, in, the, in the family. As brands, well as, which brands do you buy? No. Anything that's available? Yeah, anything, yeah. Like uh, uh, Tata uh, has lots of electric vehicles now. Uh, I personally use an Audi electric. Uh, my, my wife uses uh, uh, you know, other EQS and uh, stuff like that. So, so there, are, uh, uh, there are so many options now. And they are absolutely phenomenal, uh, the electric cars. The, and with time, this technology is only going to improve mature and, and mature and, and develop. Uh, for example, a battery which gives you, let's say, uh, 300 kilometers today, same battery, same thing will give 600 kilometers as the technology improves. Mr. Smith, artificial intelligence has most often been something held out in a distant future. Uh, a lot of what Microsoft has been saying and doing recently, especially through ChatGPT, seems to suggest that that future is here, it's now. Can you give us a sense of what you think are the most obvious and the most powerful applications of artificial intelligence in the manner in which countries are governed? Well, the, <clears throat> the first thing I would say is I think you're right. Uh, the truth is we really started to recognize last year as we worked with OpenAI, and it really is this you know, relationship that you know, we've been building for several years, that we would see in 2023 advances that two years ago we would have said we wouldn't see until 2033. So it's as if you know, the future has been pulled forward by a decade. And you know, I think the first thing we should recognize is that people will develop creative uses for this that none of us have yet imagined. That's the first thing we learn every time technology moves forward in this way. I will say this, I think this is an enormous tool for what I would call critical thinking and creative expression. Take the example you just heard. Someone has a question, they can go get an answer to it, even if the answer right now is in a language they do not speak. That opens up the opportunity for people to just think and learn more about the world. The other thing that, of course, everyone is experiencing when they use ChatGPT is it's this enormous tool for expression, for creative expression. Now just step back and say, is there anything in human life in any country that doesn't involve some level of critical thinking or creative expression? The answer is no. So now we recognize this will permeate almost everything. Rolling and action. Okay. I've been caught over there, but what I was essentially doing is looking at flights from Davos to San Francisco, from San Francisco to London, and then from there to Barcelona. It's a complicated job, and I think I need to hire a travel agent. The reason I'm saying that is because the next few days entails so much travel for most of us creators and journalists because there's so much happening in the world of tech. A bunch of events lined up. The only thing that I can tell you in my most elementary form is if you're on the market for a new smartphone, then please don't pick it up already because Nabila has the latest from the world of smartphones and she's going to tell us why you should wait it out for the next four weeks if you're in the market for a new device. If one of your 2023 resolutions was to get a new mobile phone and if you still haven't yet purchased any, then we'd suggest waiting for another month now and then take your decision. Because February is going to be the month of tech launches. Or shall we say it's tech query? Never mind. Big names like Samsung and OnePlus are gearing up to launch their flagship phones in the coming month. Joining the list here are also popular brands like Oppo and Vivo. So let's take you through a list of all that's expected in February. First up will be Samsung, which will launch its flagship Galaxy series on February 1st. Samsung is expected to launch three models, the Galaxy S23, Galaxy S23 Plus and the Galaxy S23 Ultra. 
All three are expected to be powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chip along with some of the best smartphone displays in the industry. Then on February 7th will come a major announcement from OnePlus as the company is now expected to launch the OnePlus 11. Also likely to be powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, the OnePlus 11 will also feature a triple camera setup with Hasselblad tuning. The device will also come with a curved 2K AMOLED screen with a 120Hz refresh rate. Enough competition for iPhones? Well, we certainly hope these brands can pack a punch. And then there's also Realme that is expected to launch the Realme GT Neo 5 on February 8th. It will come with a 6.7-inch OLED display and will be powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip. An MWC launch that has all of us excited is the Xiaomi. The tech company has now confirmed the launch of its 13 series at the Mobile World Congress, set to kick off on the 27th of Feb. The company is expected to launch two phones, Xiaomi 13 and Xiaomi 13 Pro, both again powered by the new Snapdragon chip and a curved AMOLED display. We will wait to see, in fact, wait to see if at all they launch more products in their ecosystem as part of their segment and branding as it's built quite extensively at this point of time. Samsung will finally have competition from Oppo as well. We showcased its China-only foldable as a Tech Today exclusive last year, but this time they're taking things to a whole new level here, hopefully with an India launch. Oppo is expected to announce its latest series of foldable phones and it looks like the Samsung Flip 4 will face stiff competition from the Oppo Find N2 Flip. Now, there's also Vivo, which is expected to launch the X90 and the X90 Pro smartphones on the last day of January. The X80, though, had one of the best cameras on a smartphone, so tech enthusiasts are waiting now for this launch with bated breath to see what better features they have on this one. So, there you go, the top smartphones being launched in February. Ayush, I'm really guessing here that we're going to have exclusive access to a lot of these devices in the coming days, aren't we? Well, Nabila, you've used the E for exclusive, but in the tech world, there's an E for embargoes. All I can say is that a lot of what you've covered in that extensive report will be exclusively on Tech Today. And the T that I can use is a lot of travel to get there. Thanks so much for that. As always, it's been an action-packed episode of Tech Today, and we've enjoyed putting it together for you in this special episode, the latest and greatest in tech in business and what's happening in Davos. If you want more coverage on these particular topics, then you have to go onto our website where we've got you all covered. Even the segments you've seen on this show and so much more happening from the world of tech and business, it's all on our website and our social media handles. I'm your host Ayush Alavadi saying thank you so much for watching. Until next week, adios. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.